Hey everyone, and welcome to our session, Access, Engage, and Express with Kami. My name is Dr. Hilary Goldthwaite Fowles, and I'm so excited to be with you today to talk about the ways that you can use Kami to access, engage, and express with your learners. So a little bit about myself. I am an accessibility accomplice. I'm also a special education consultant and assistive technology specialist who's most passionate about ensuring that curriculum instruction, materials, and methods are accessible to all. I also believe that learning can and should be joyful even when it's challenging. And we're gonna go over the ways that Kami can help you leverage that in your setting. We're also really gonna talk about learner-centered, not teacher-centered. So not necessarily what I think is best, but a co-op relationship with your students on how you can work together to use Kami to access, engage, and express. I think it's just a great tool and we're going to go over some really cool things today. So our goal today is to help you all use Kami with your learners to access learning, engage in learning, and express their learning no matter the environment. COVID has taught us so many things and one of the things is it's helped us rethink what is a learning environment. That notion of a classroom where learning happens is really kind of gone out of the water at this moment in time and Kami can really help you leverage that no matter where you are, whether you're in person, you're in a hybrid situation, you're full on remote, you're synchronous, you're asynchronous, or even you have to maintain social distancing rules. Our collaboration tools and Google Classroom integration tools and all of the annotation tools in, Tom, in Kami will really help you to leverage that no matter where you are. So I'd like for you to take a second and think about a goal that you have for our time together today. You can either keep it in your head, you can write it down, or just think of one as we're talking today that makes the most sense for you. It's really important that you have some ownership in your own learning today, and I'm hopeful that I can guide you through that process. So why Kami? Why are we even talking about Kami? Our flip has just blown the education world by storm and taken things to a whole different realm of understanding for us. It's our job to find tools and supports that are accessible to all of our learners, are easy to use, and also can marry with some of the tools that you currently have. And Kami really does that. One of the things it does is those PDF files. Teachers love their curricular materials that are all PDF based. That's okay. However, if you're working with children with disabilities or different learning variances, you'll come to quickly understand that PDFs are not the most accessible format. So the wonderful folks at Kami have developed this tool that's a Chrome extension that you can just use to make those PDFs less pesky. I call them pesky PDFs for a reason. The student teacher engagement, so you can take a PDF or a lesson and make it interactive by inserting comments audio, video, we're gonna talk about that. All of the tools are so easy to use for all levels. You can see them, you can hear them, you can interact and customize them to individualize the learning experience. The other part that I love is the way that Kami integrates with top learning management systems such as Schoology, Google Classroom, or Canvas that really lend itself to synchronous and asynchronous learning. You literally can create an assignment either within Kami or within your learning management system. It's that simple. So how does Kami connect with the terms access, engage, and express? As you know, something I'm really passionate about is universal design for learning. And universal design for learning is a wonderful framework that allows for teachers to design learning experiences where your students are accessing, engaging, and expressing in the way that makes sense for them by offering options, choices, and flexibility. What happens with Kami and this connection to universal design is pretty simple. The student-teacher engagement where you can interact and insert comments and really build that relationship with your students and get that optimal feedback that your students are looking for. You're also presenting your content in multiple ways, so it's not just a PDF. You can make them come to life by embedding audio or video or a text-based comment or having annotations. You can personalize the learning, so you can use Kami to just do personalized assignments in your learning management system 
So it's not just a one size fits none or one size fits some, it's multiple means for everybody. I love that feature. The other part I love as an assistive technology specialist is sometimes it's hard to find a tool that I could just use out of the box for some of my learners with the materials that we have without a lot of retrofitting. Kami allows me to do that easily with their built-in OCR tool, their split and merge tool. They're also embedded text-to-speech and speech-to-text tools. They're wonderful features to have, which then lends itself for you to have options, choices, and flexibility in your learning and learning environment. There's nothing better than giving ownership and agency to learning for your learners. And Kami is a tool that you can use to accomplish that goal. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about what do we mean? What do we mean by access, engage, and express? So those terms, access, engage, and express, really speak to the UDL guidelines that you can find on the slide and they're linked. So you can go to www.cast.org and look at the UDL guidelines and find where Kami's tools and supports fit into their guidelines. They fit in with access, which is multiple means of representation. So how are you presenting content? Are you presenting it one way? Is it paper? Is it online? Is it a mix of both? Multiple means of engagement are the ways that we ensure that our learners are seen, heard, valued, and respected in the classroom environment, whether it's online or in person or a mix of both. What motivates your learners? What gets them hooked? What helps them stay motivated even when it's hard? How do they persist through a task even when it's challenging? And putting those things in place for those multiple means of engagement. And then multiple means of action and expression is simply the way that learners show what they know. And it's multiple ways. So it's not just a paper. It's not just a recording, it's all of that. And Kami has these flexible features that we'll go over that will help you really ignite that spark and love of learning for your learners. So access, we're gonna go over some things and then we're gonna do a tool time and I'll do a little demo for you. So access, Kami allows you to design options for accessing content. Do you have pre-made content? Great, use Kami, create an assignment insert an audio comment, a video comment, put some guided notes in there, easy peasy. Go beyond the worksheet. Worksheets are static. They do have their value if we're practicing some foundational skills. So I'm not dissing worksheets at all. They do have a value in some instances. I love how Kami brings it to life. So we have audio and video text comments that offer multiple ways to access learning, such as putting audio directions. So now we're gonna get right into our demo time. And I'm actually going to look at um, this lovely number sense that I have here, which is from a curricular company. And it's looking at access. So I have this assignment that I have to do, adding and subtracting, and I'm finding the math. And so I'm not sure what this says. So I can actually highlight and I can use my text-to-speech tool to have that read to me. And it's a wonderful thing to have that. I have the question here that I can have read to, and then I can actually use a text box to insert my comment, and I can use my voice to write with the comment. So it's, question, it's asking the question, at 8 o'clock a.m. the thermometer shows the temperature outside is minus 2 degrees Celsius. What clothes should you wear? And the hint is water freezes at zero degrees Celsius. So am I going to wear warm clothes or cold clothes? I probably want to wear something that keeps me warm. So my answer is going to be, I'm going to wear something that keeps me warm, period. Notice that in Kami's dictation feature, I can use punctuation. And then I can move this so that it's in line with that place. And as a teacher, I can insert a comment with an audio direction. So I could always do a screen comment or do a desktop comment, but what I wanna do is a voice comment here. So I'm gonna click on this arrow and I'm gonna read the directions. Integers are the numbers that you see most commonly around you in the real world. For example, all the numbers on the thermometer are integers. So now I have this audio comment that I can use. 
that makes this come to life. So now, not only am I starting to talk about access, I am also getting into the engagement part. How do we engage with learning? Some um, teachers in our district are using a, Kami as a virtual whiteboard for math. A really good example is a high school special education math teacher uses Kami and distance learning math to help engage the learner's brains. They use it as a warm-up activity where they have a blank page and she just goes through equations and they are in it at the same time and are solving the equations with her. Again, audio, video, text comments like I just demonstrated previously in a, a commercially produced content also help for that feedback loop. You can also use those comments to give feedback. So sometimes that written feedback is good, but go beyond the red pen and give an audio or a video comment. You could also video comment with a screen share of your screen to do mathematical processes. There are also collaborative tools and elements, so you can have multiple users in a document working together to solve a problem or find a solution. And then you have options for photo and video. And then also, Kami has these awesome stickers. So let's get into a quick demo of that, and I'm actually going to show you a blank page because I really want to show you the drawing tool that I can use. So I can just write anything, and I'm using a touchscreen device right now, and I can use either a stylus or my finger. So this is also good motor movement for people, and I can, you know, write in a mathematical equation here. You know, obviously one plus two equals three, for example. I can also add media, which means I can pull up something from YouTube, Google Drive, my computer, or a Google image search. So I can do that, and sometimes you'll have to re-authenticate. If I'm not happy with that, I can erase, and I can also insert shapes. So this is great for geometry. I can insert ellipses, and I can insert a triangle, um, I can change, notice if you notice, the degrees show up. So I can really customize this to make a right triangle or I can click on draw a right triangle and it will do that for me. I can also just do multiple shapes and do all kinds of things within Kami. And then if I want, I can leave a comment and just do that comment in that, in that fashion. What you want to make sure, though, is that you don't want the computer comment unless you're screen capturing. You could do a voice comment or a text comment. So I'm just going to do a text comment here. And I can also write with my voice in this text comment. 1 plus 2 equals 3. Please solve the shapes and put them in order. And there you go. Very simple. So let's get back to our session with another way to use Kami to express. And I have some student work samples because I love these. Ways that Kami can express, audio, text, and video comments, dictation for written expression that I just demonstrated. So one of the ways that Kami is being used in our setting is an elementary resource room teacher uses Kami with math students and a learner was challenged with expressing their own knowledge within that particular um, curricular material that was being used in Kami. The dictation feature in Kami allowed that learner to explain their thinking and was completely seamless. So we went from tears to cheers, which means we removed that barrier that caused frustration. And now we have a child who was able to express what they knew by just clicking on a button in Kami. And it was right there. They didn't have to go outside of the document or outside of the material. It was just part of the learning experience and it was there and they just kept going. Um, you can also complete math fact drills, so such as audio, text, video, dictation in regular and specialized settings. One of our settings uses it to practice spelling words. We have a, a paper with lined paper and a stylus, and we'll use Kami to practice spelling words and to practice penmanship to get the motor aspect of writing because there's such good research out there about the brain and writing, so practicing cursive, practicing print, using Kami, you can do that anytime, anywhere and you don't necessarily need paper if that's something that you don't need in that moment. The other part that I love about Kami is the equation editor for expression. So using that equation editor for physical access. So if you're not able to write those mathematical notations, don't worry. 
you can just click into the equation editor in Kami and it will do that work for you. So let's get into a quick demo. And I'm actually going to use a river. So this was great. This teacher in fourth grade wanted students to draw and label a river, including and label the following parts, riverbank, riverbed, mouth, delta, and source. I love this because this is the learner's work. They drew all of the different elements and labeled where the source was, the delta, the riverbed, the mouth, and the riverbank. So not only were they able to draw that, they were able to actually get that into their brain, which was absolutely a wonderful thing. So being able to do something like drawing and labeling a river and putting those labels in on a blank page in Kami is wonderful. And, and there was no issues about drawing and making sure it was perfect. Kami's easily forgivable. That eraser feature is great for kids that are really concerned about making sure that everything's just so. I can, you know, you can go right back in and you can fix it. So it's very forgiving. It, get, it gives that ease for people who are very anxious and want things to be just so. It really helps make that art and those aspects of drawing a lot more accessible to kids who really feel intimidated by art. I've had some students that use it to draw as an option when that art in the physical aspect isn't working for them. And again, they go from tears to cheers, which means smiles on their faces and happy learners are wonderful learners to have. I want to leave you with a couple of thoughts. The first one is the most important one, is when we're designing our learning experiences, I'm hoping that we're designing for the margins first. I know the slide says design with disability in mind first, but I'd like to expand it even further beyond disability. Design with people that are not your average or what you think is your average learner first. Design for people who are different than you first. Design for people who have disabilities first. Design for people who don't speak English as their first language first. Design for people who are of a different race or gender or orientation as you and you know that information first. So let's be inclusive and use Kami to help achieve that goal by supporting personalized learning in our inclusive classrooms, increasing engagement where kids are just motivated and they're invested in their learning, and that we're encouraging collaboration between students by using a shared resource in Kami or a shared document in Kami where we can work together and we don't physically have to be together because right now we can't. But when we can, we can also use this as an option. Think about kids who are homebound with complex medical needs after COVID-19. They're going to be home. What a great way to use Kami and a learning management tool to have some collaboration between peers. You don't have to be in the classroom, but you're still a part of the classroom. And then you're individualizing individual choice and autonomy. So you're really bringing that ownership, that agency and self-advocacy so that kids are really invested and understand who they are as a learner and why learning is so important. And when we honor this variability that exists in all of us, we are celebrating diversity and we're celebrating and honoring and we're recognizing the, hum the humanity in all of us. And that's something that's really, really important. There are some resources that I've attached to this session and I hope that you engage with them. There are other uses for Kami in the inclusive classroom that you can click on. The UDL guidelines are so important. They're wonderful checkpoints to help you design your lessons to be more inclusive and using Kami as a tool to do that. And then I also, there's a lovely, Kami is a wonderful YouTube channel. If you are a person that needs to see, hear, and feel it, I recommend you Check this playlist out. It has all the features and their YouTube channel is chock full of wonderful tips and tricks to help leverage Kami with you and your learners. I'd like to thank you all for your time today. You can find me on social media, especially on Twitter at Hillary underscore ATP. And you can also find me at www.hillaryhelpsyoulearn.com. Thank you all for your time today. It's been a pleasure and I hope you enjoy the rest of our sessions today at Kami Connect. Take care.